Hello and welcome to SpaceX Zone. In today's video, we take a look at what's inside the Starship. Do you like this video? Please hit the like and subscribe button. Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel. Starship, as it's known, will be a fully reusable transport system capable of carrying up to 100 people to the Red Planet. The founding ethos of Elon Musk's private spaceflight company SpaceX was to make life multiplanetary. This is partly motivated by existential threats, such as an asteroid strike big enough to wipe out humanity. Settling other planets would place some of the eggs in other baskets, sparing human civilization if one of them were to experience a cataclysm. In 2016, the entrepreneur outlined his rationale at an international conference in Mexico. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One path is, we stay on Earth forever and then there will be some eventual extinction event, he said. The alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which I hope you would agree is the right way to go. Musk has often spoken about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. Let's take a look at the spacecraft first. With its nose cone and landing fins, the stainless steel vehicle resembles the rocket ships from the golden age of science fiction. At the rear of the 50 meter, 160 feet long craft are six highly efficient Raptor engines developed over the course of a decade by SpaceX. The combustion takes place in stages and the engine's design cuts the amount of propellant that's wasted. Towards the middle of the vehicle, there are propellant tanks. These feed liquid methane and liquid oxygen to the Raptors. Methane is the fuel and oxygen acts as an oxidizer, a chemical that makes the fuel burn. The combination is dubbed methalox. The choice of fuel is unusual for rocket engines, but methane can generate plenty of thrust. It's also a prudent choice in light of Musk's designs on Mars. The SpaceX founder says that CH4 could be synthesized from Martian subsurface water and from atmospheric carbon dioxide using a chemical process known as the Sabatier reaction. Refueling Starship for the return trip to Earth using Martian resources would confer a level of self-sufficiency, making journeys both more feasible and cost-effective. Towards the front of the spacecraft, which is sometimes referred to as the upper stage, is a huge payload compartment that will be able to haul large cargo or people to destinations in deep space. Now let's turn to the rocket. Measuring 70 meters, 230 feet long, super heavy, will be filled with 3,400 tons or 6.8 million pounds of cryogenic chilled methalox. It will be powered by around 32 Raptor engines. The specification has changed several times though, and should achieve more than 70 mega newtons of maximum thrust. It should be able to lift at least 100 tons of payload and possibly as much as 150 tons to low Earth orbit. This will make Super Heavy more powerful than the immense Saturn V launcher used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 70s. As it ascends from the launch pad, the combined Starship system will begin to pitch over towards the intended orbit. When the upper stage separates in space, Super Heavy flips over while falling back towards Earth. As it descends, Super Heavy will deploy steel structures called grid fins, shaped a bit like potato waffles from the sides of the booster. These will help steer the rocket stage back towards its launch pad so it can be flown again. Previously, SpaceX had wanted to ignite Super Heavy's Raptor engines to guide it down a precision landing on six steel legs. SpaceX does something similar with the first stages of its Falcon 9 rockets, leading them safely on landing pads and drone ships after a launch. But this thinking has since changed. SpaceX now plans to catch the falling booster using an arm on the launch tower. This is the structure that provides engineers and crew members with access to the spacecraft and rocket while they are sitting on the pad before launch. 
Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage could be inserted into a parking orbit after separation, allowing it to be refilled with propellant. If you just fly Starship to orbit and don't do any refilling, it's pretty good. You'll get 150 tons to low Earth orbit and have no fuel to go anywhere else, Musk explained during a conference keynote speech in 2017. If you send up tankers and refill in orbit, you could refill the tanks up all the way to the top and get 150 tons of payload all the way to Mars. To refuel, the spacecraft would dock or mate with another starship already circling the Earth that acts solely as a propellant depot. The two ships would actually mate at the rear section. They would use the same mating interface that they use to connect to the booster on liftoff. Musk said in 2017. To transfer propellant, it becomes very simple. You use control thrusters to accelerate in the direction that you want to empty. Depositing payloads and reclaiming others in orbit is an added perk to Starship's stated goal, which is ferrying cargo and eventually crews to the Moon and Mars. According to the recent white paper, whose author list includes researchers affiliated with NASA and SpaceX, the company currently plans to launch multiple uncrewed Starship missions to Mars every two years, each time exploiting a planetary alignment particularly favorable for the voyage. Without a crew, the authors write, there's great potential, there's great potential to unload cargo on Mars, as well as to bring back samples from the planet. And similar opportunities exist for transport to and from Earth's moon. In this regard especially, Starship's sheer size is an asset. Because Starship can return tens of tons of payload from the surface of the moon, the return sample mass of lunar samples from a single mission would drop the combined total returned mass of all lunar sample return missions to date, the authors write. Thanks for watching this video of SpaceX Zone. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more out of space content.